Good morning. It's uh, it's today. We're alive. Thought you may want some company. Maybe look into some of the simple things. I'm using a tripod here, to, which is multi-adjustable, so it may help. But I'm going to uh, put some tea on and uh, make a pot of tea. So I imagine this will be pretty shaky because I expect I'll move it around a lot, but maybe in between the periods of shaky, there'll be some stability. So uh, here's our teapot. And uh, find a spot for it on our, you could see uh, my giant mess of things. Yeah, there's a candle we have burning for somebody that we lost recently. And uh, some remnants of the salad I ate last night. But I think we have a little bit of space. Here's where uh, Saki's water is. He only drinks out of a only drinks out of a pitcher. There's some stones I'm cleaning. And a gift of some rosemary. I actually have dishes done somehow. So I'm gonna make a pot of tea. And uh, go from there because simplicity can be its own ritual, can be its own bedrock, can be its own relief. And so together, we make a pot of tea list of some homework we're doing in the meditation class. Kind of keep it here so it keeps entering my mind and I can uh, revise it. I'm gonna have this uh, tea brick, but first I'm gonna wash your hands. I might as well return to the bathroom from last night. I'll balance this in this awkward spot above the toilet. Uh, some, uh, naturally by Dara, Dara uh, frankincense wash. In fact, power sound toe, as was just recommended to me. For the hands. I'm sure this is spellbinding video. Absolutely spellbinding. I do recommend that even though I haven't quite done it yet, eventually you take your soap and you put it in an appropriate soap dispenser. Like my monkey soap dispenser here. But there's the uh, shower. Thanks for uh, seeing to my needs last night. So, I think we have the water on. Here. Yeah, so our water's on. We have our golden flower tea brick, which uh, I know Tommy's enjoying as well. And we're gonna go get our cha dal. This is uh, some of the tea that we have here. There's some wheels I have to install and something in the barn today. And there's our cha dal here. And some more golden flower tea brick as well. Just give you a little tour. Here's some of my CDs and uh, herbs. Just back from a trip. There's my pile of stuff just back from a trip and camera charging books. And, uh, there's my travel bag, semi unpacked. The laundry's pulled out of it. And uh, 
There's a note to myself, stuff to do today. And there's my backpack that ain't been open yet. But getting there. Uh, in case you feel like the end of the world is nigh, you can stock up on all the important, all the very most important life giving items. Just, you know, I think you'll probably find that um, your bomb shelter without Girl Scout cookies is not a bomb shelter. So, we have our tea on, we have our teapot, we have our chad that and we have our tea, and we have you and me. So, uh, I'll turn the light on. I don't know how this will come across on camera, but I, in fact, will see if I can give you a, a better view without the camera falling. Moving pots and pans around to try and balance the, uh, yeah, yeah, that might be a bit of a view. So the child now will be uh, separating the compressed tea. So we're pulling flakes out of the tea brick. I think we'll read some more poetry together. And what I'm doing is I'm separating that which was compressed into a seeming oneness. I often think of this as revealing duality rather than any actual change. It's just a change in perspective, a change in understanding. And so that's, that's uh, quite enough. So um, this sort of uh, aged tea, an important element of this, this is a golden flower tea, which means there's these little golden flakes, maybe nuggets even, in it. It's just gone into the bag weird, so I'm trying not to tear the bag. It's uh, sort of caught on itself oddly a little bit. I don't quite see how, but I imagine. There we go. So, it's important uh, with this sort of aged tea, not to seal it uh, away from the air entirely. So I'm going to close the bag loosely and then some air continues to travel through on this. So I don't know why you need to see it. I'm just set. I was going to move the camera to show you where I put it away. But <laughs> All right, might as well. Let me just put the tea brick here. There's a nice Sai Baba CD I just got from Diane Pfeiffer Justice and I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but it's, it's right there. So, Jeff, if you're watching, I mean to listen. And so, uh, so we have our tea. You might be able to see why I wash my hands now. A few grams, which we'll put into the strainer. And we'll leave this here, and we'll set the cha dao away. Just clean it off uh, the camera here for a minute, but uh, we'll set this sort of daily tool away. There's my. Uh, morning herbs, which I have yet to take. Uh, I guess we could say this video is brought to you by Life Kind. <laughs> uh, 
set the cha cha away. And then let's find ourselves some poetry. Oh, I guess I give you the the view of the walk down the hall. See what we could find for some poetry. Uh, last night we were choosing from the Red Pine Bookshelf, which I'll endeavor to show you. It was a Red Pine Bookshelf. We selected some Red Pine. And we read from The Cloud Should Know Me by now. Perhaps we'll read from south of the clouds, which is in southwest China's Yunnan province. Hmm. Uh, maybe not. I'm attempting to read from Stonehouse. Yeah, I think we'll read from Stonehouse. This is a poet also translated by Red Pine, a.k.a. Bill Porter. And it's uh, called The Mountain Poems of Stonehouse. And just so that I'm not distracted and uh, forgetting the tea, <laughs> I'm coming back to the kitchen to read. And uh, <clears throat> we can read right here. Here's a look at the book. Uh, I'm just deciding where I'd like to be. I don't know. I think I'll set this up. I guess I'll show you. I'll set it up on the shelf in the circle I put in the wall. And that should be a pretty good spot. I'm gonna just adjust the leg so it's gonna wobble on y'all. But let's we can handle a little wobbling, can't we? We can handle a little bit of uncertainty. And the way that we're doing it is together uh, with, sim with simplicity, with connection, with ritual, if that's what you need, and with a commitment to the life affirming poetry, tea. It feels like a good start for a day, for a life, for a practice. So I'm just going to flip through randomly. Just checking on the tea. Read it by my candlelight. I'll just be reading. A hundred years pass by in a flash. How many think this through? If what you're doing right now isn't clear, the edge between life and death is sheer. Stitches on a monk's robe are a loving wife's tears. Jade grains of rice are an old farmer's fat. Doesn't think who gives, receives no reward. A fruit forms in time where there is a seed. That's on page 35. In case you went into your library and picked up your copy of Stonehouse and began to read along, <laughs> that was page 35. Eight or nine pines behind his hut. Two or three mounds of taro in front. A mountain recluse doesn't have many interests. All he talks about are his possessions. And for us, that's a giant box of Girl Scout cookies. So we're good.
Will the porridge or rice ever end? Will the sun or moon ever rest? Either way, it's no concern of mine. So many fantasies arise in vain. So we're tending to the heart with the poetry, with the conscious creation of the tea. We're not trying to distract ourselves or hide in the poetry. We're not trying to entertain our mind away from the present. We're trying to touch the touchstone of the heart. Help to more appropriately frame the mind space. Since it's Wednesday, I should mention that we do a meditation class tonight, 6.30, even though I'm holding up four fingers. I can do it the Chinese way, that's 6. I mean, 6.30. Tonight, every Wednesday night, for one hour. Welcome to join us. Page 49. I live in the mountains in order to practice. I don't need others to examine my faults when life becomes simple old habits and when the mind becomes clear its light finally shines. Planting pines and tilling fields have strengthened my body. Reading sutras and mending clothes have sharpened my sight. The world's absurdities are absurd indeed. The refugees of Chin are called hermits too. I searched high and low without success. By chance, I found a f this forested peak. My thatch hut pokes through the clouds and sky. A moss-covered trail cuts through the bamboo. The greedy are worried about favor and shame. I spend my time in the stillness of meditation. Bizarre rocks and gnarled pines remain unknown to those who look for the mind with the mind. Also page 49. Oh, this one I really like. I expect that I found it because it's numbered 108 in the book. It's on page 115. <laughs> I expect that's uh, <clears throat> I expect that's why I found it before because it's 108. <sighs> so this is a. Uh, this reference is a little stream, and uh, it may help to know, or you may be curious to know that uh, Stonehouse, the, there was a spring behind his uh, hovel, his little hut uh, in the mountain, uh, on the mountain, in the mountains, and uh, he dug a, a channel, I guess, um, a stream bed perhaps, um, beside the house, uh, into uh, uh, a pond, a, sp a small pond that he dug in front. So there was this spring behind and a stream beside and a pond before. Um, so it might help to kind of visualize that. So. Stripped of conditions, my mind is at rest. Emptied of existence, my nature is at peace. How often at night have my windows turned white 
as the moon and stream passed by my door. Hmm. So this is page 119. Uh, at the end of this poem, it, he talks about the Kasaya, the, the, the Buddhist um, robes that uh, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, cover one shoulder and leave one shoulder a breast bare. So that's the Kasaya, but he, he kind of mentions that here in this poem. Uh, although I don't think by name. Yeah. But you might get the reference now. Head of white hair, shoulders, all bones. I've lived in a hut more years than I can count. My shorts have no drawstring. My pants have no legs. And half of my robe is missing. <laughs> so so stunning. There's a way to turn it off when I'm doing live. So I think when I try and turn it off, I just snooze it, which means I guess in 10 minutes it'll do it again. But our team may be ready by then. I have now just decided to use the burner that works. So we're beginning to make tea now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's uh I think there's one out of four burners working, so <laughs> if you feel like coming to fix my stove, let me know. <laughs> this one uh references the stream as well. Up and down mountain zigzag trail, stone in the clouds, house by a stream. Land too scarce to grow much, I even farm west of the bridge. I really dig that stone in the clouds line. You know, is that the mountain? Is that him, stone house? Is it referring to which, to both? So, so uh, it's up and down mountain zigzag trail, stone in the clouds, house by a stream. We talked about the stream already. Land too scarce to grow much. I even farm west of the bridge. So that could just be describing the topography there, but you know, the west is also the, the, the land of the immortals, the Kunlun direction in China. So perhaps farming west is, you know, a suggestion that he's planting his seeds and cultivating things in the immortal realm or taking his sustenance there, farming there, or both or neither. When he talks about the zigzag mountains or the zigzag paths, uh, you know, first of all, the zigzag idea suggests, um, you know, a steep climb, but also suggests uh, sort of uh, unclear intention, right? We, we don't have that point A to point B. We have which is the right way. And these paths um, are not paths that Stonehouse would have made. Uh, Stonehouse would have climbed the mountain, uh, you know, as, you know, um, history has it as the first person to climb and live on the mountain. So in other words, he arrived uh, to a pathless place and he wouldn't have had cause to make paths because he was hermit 
uh, is living there, not, you know, commuting. But uh, the paths then are from pilgrims. And so the fact of many paths are just pilgrims from different directions, which could be a metaphor for uh, coming from different places, uh, you know, coming from different places, different traditions, but also the effort of the steepness, right, that the climb, which is the zigzag, you know, you, you can't climb straight up when things get very steep, you have to, um, uh, I want to say tack, and that's the wrong word, but zigzag, I'll say again, but it also suggests that sort of lack of clarity of intent that we would suppose Stonehouse had, who is actually at the uh, the end of the paths. So, we hear that line, the zigzag paths, as with most of this, is not just a, a simple description of the scene. But it's not, not a simple description of the scene. It's, it's a description of an interior landscape as well as an exterior context. So since I talked about that one, I think I'll read it again. And I do hear sounds from the tea kettle, so we might actually have tea. Up and down mountain, zigzag trail, stone in the clouds, house by a stream, land too scarce to grow much, a even farm west of the bridge. And that one, there's, we could go on if this was a lesson on these, you know, if we were having a, a class, we could discuss this one for many, 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 many hours. Something to think about is that, you know, this is a four line poem. And You'd have somebody that wakes and enters their practice for, we would imagine, some hours a day. Then enters their chores, which we imagine would be some many hours a day. So I don't really know. Maybe that leaves four, five, six, seven hours to write. Uh, and of course, during the chores, during the practice, they may be writing, as a lot of writing happens here before the pen. So we, we could argue that the poet was writing all day. But even if we imagine just the, the actual sort of leisure time to sit at a desk or the equivalent and actually work at, wrestle with, struggle through the poem and then put it down and have it complete. It's really interesting in its uh, singularity. Because a good day for a poet, like a recluse hermit poet, could be considered to be one poem written, like the result of a day. For us, that would feel like we let people down, let ourselves down, we failed, uh, we didn't live up to this or that. So our to-do list starts at 15 things, right? And at the end of the day, we take measure, we take stock. And we'd like to see six to 30 things checked off to feel like we've lived up to ourselves, that we've been a good mother, that we've been a good worker, that we've been a good family member, community member, And I'm not suggesting this is better or that we're worse. I'm just saying that when we read a poem and, you know, four lines and, and generally brief lines, I mean, these are worked over. This is the, the fruit of a day. And sometimes they're the fruit of years. They're the fruit of an entire life's discipline. They're the fruit of a life. But at least in this brief description, the fruit of a day it's very interesting to consider that, you know, the monk going to sleep, you know, with the moon for a blanket and the nightingales for an alarm, might have put down four lines. And in those four lines, 
there can be, you know, just years, years of study, of heart opening. So since this is a, um, a poor, uh, an aged tea, uh, we want to put the water on on a rolling boil. So we're going to let this whistle before we pour it over. <clears throat> but the first thing I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see or not. I'll just hold the camera. Arm. The first thing I'm going to do is actually just preheat the, uh, the pot so that the boiling water doesn't overly cool. So that the boiling water doesn't overly cool the uh, the pot and the tea and the surrounds. So back to Stonehouse, and then uh, we'll see what we do after the tea together. No mind in my work, the wind blows through the trees. No work in my mind, the moon crosses the sky. Wind sound and moonlight wear away, one layer, then another. And this is uh, referencing like a thousand year old Buddhist phrase um, attributed to Deshan, uh, and that's actually Shan is mountain, so it's another person with a mountain name. No mind in work, no work in mind. Of course, no mind itself is a phrase, that Mushin idea. So, Stonehouse is playing on that in this opening stanza. No mind in my work, the wind blows through the trees. No work in my mind, the moon crosses the sky. Wind sound and moonlight wear away one layer, then another. So in this poem it feels as though he's discussing no mind in my work, no work in my mind. The, the twin teachers of my empty mind practice and nature, uh, wearing away my artificial nature, helping to discover my true nature. So that's a pretty heavy duty uh, description of meditation and the meditative path. I'm going to just take a few breaths before the kettle whistles. That's three breaths, and then we'll have a whistle, which means we we'll can pour our tea and then return to poetry. We had it over here a few minutes ago.
it's time for a, a spot of a pot of tea. I don't know if I can safely do all this. Oh my lord. Ooh, that smells good. We can uh, warm ourselves here. There we go. And we'll come around for some more tea. And we'll pick a iron, iron tea cup here. In case any of you are feeling blue, we'll choose a blue one. We'll let that tea steep. There's our actually matching blue. Let our tea steep. Maybe I'll actually just, since we don't have to sit here for the tea, we'll change spots. Just to have a little variation for everybody. I don't know how necessary that might be, but we're already moving it. Let's see. Will that kind of work? Another from Stonehouse. Below the pines, its twin doors are never closed. Its gilt statue is lit by blue light. A monkey breaks a vine and falls into a stream. Startled deer resume their dream in the clouds. Glad to see mountains. I like mountains better. The way finds me without trying. It's been so long since I went to the gate. The lichen and moss must be inches thick. the page so I'll read these two on page 35 and we'll pour ourselves a cup of tea I trust you're joining me we're doing this to be together to touch in on some truth some reality to forestall um, anxiety to forestall unhealthy agitation to touch in on some clarity. A hundred years pass by in a flash. How many think this through? If what you're doing right now isn't clear, the edge between life and death is sheer. Stitches on a monk's robe are a loving wife's tears. Jade grains of rice are an old farmer's fat. Don't think who gives receives no reward. A fruit forms in time where there is a seed. We read that one before, but it may go in now. And the one that follows it, also on page 35. I entered the mountains and my cares became clear. Serene at heart. I let them all go. The trees beyond my yard thin out and fall. The stream before my door becomes louder when it rains. I pick greens and boil tea when a fellow hermit arrives. I give a neighbor monk chrysanthemums in a pot from town. The gentry might have, might have their fine food and clothes. 
but they can't match a mountain monk with scenes like these. In case you want to pause and read along at home. Imagine taking a screenshot or pausing the video. But there you are. So, thanks to Stonehouse, who all like a rock on a mountain, makes a fine home for my heart. So, our tea is ready shortly. I've just noticed that we've left the light on here from the hand washing. So I head back to the library. And uh, we'll set Stonehouse away on his shelf. I get such exquisite pleasure out of Stonehouse having his own having his own shelf here beside the yarrow stalks and, and there's a few books that I have yet to file sort of piling up I'm going to look at what we have piled up here Martin Boober. Oh, yeah, a couple of Boobers. Okay. So, we'll have our tea. And I'm thinking that we'll smudge together. So, let's see how we've done with our with our tea. Oh, that looks very good. Here's our cup of tea. I can't tell how well I'm aiming it, but I'm looking at the steam coming up. And we're gonna get some smudge. So, uh, Here's the sacred table. Uh, there's a bald eagle feather that I just received from uh, Saints when I was out in Washoe country. And some smile seeds. There's a bunch of plants we just took in for winter, including this from an acupuncturist friend, Chris Lacava, and she seems to be doing extraordinarily well. She even flowered. And uh, now we're going to come over here to the smudge stuff. There's the smudge basket. So I have a little Palo Santo, which in fact was the hand wash that we just used a few minutes ago. And uh, thank you, George, for lighting this Palo Santo. to move with some speed because I'm doing this indoors and normally uh, I wouldn't <laughs> this would be done outdoors but I'm trying to juggle a few things can't tell if I'm aiming this smoke. I'm not going to bring the candle out because it's too much to juggle. Ordinarily I would to relight things. But 
it is what it is. There's a few items I have to mail people. I'm just gonna get the tea, put the shoes on, step outside, make an offering. There's our tea. These iron pots are so great to feel in the hand. So warm. I'm trying to turn the light off without spilling the tea. Oh, it's such a nice. Mm. Oh. Okay, we're still smoking here. I wonder if our, our Palo Santo seems not to be, so I'm gonna give it another try. Tapping, you may be hearing the workers outside going to work already. But so I think we have a little smoke. So we'll make an offering. I was going to go to the grieving tree, but I do believe that at the moment I'm on Wi Fi, and if I go there, I'm likely to be off Wi Fi. And I don't know how Facebook works, you know, if it'll just switch to, you know, 4G or something, or it'll cut the live stream. So I'm going to go to a different spot to make an offering. We'll see what happens. So we have our tea, we have our smudge, and we have very little opportunity to close the door behind us, being just one person. <laughs> Now we're outside. I'm gonna set the tea down and get the offerings. And we're still smoking here. And I had these offerings set out next to the gusa. So we'll set these here. See if uh, Mr. Saki will join us. Hey, Mr. Saki, you want to come this way? Yeah, we can do an offering now. Yeah, come on, come on. He's sitting over there by the banana tree. Come on, Saki. Expect he'll come over. It's interesting, feeling a little uh, limited because of the Wi-Fi. Where I might go normally, I'd uh, open myself. Normally, I'd open myself differently to see where the appropriate place to make an offering felt to be. I feel much more limited, so. There he is. Yeah. He just hopped down to come for a visit. There's a kitty. Yeah, come on. Yeah, we're going to do some smudging. Come on. <sighs> so. Facebook Live doesn't allow me to see what my signal is like. It sort of covers that part of the screen. So I don't know if I'm near the edge of something or doing okay, but that's okay. It is what it is, and we've had the time we've had. Hey, buddy. And so we're here with our smudge and our healing fairy altar. Right beside the blue spruce. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. Well, that's the Palo Santo that we have right there. That's the one that you really like. Well, sure. 
Yeah, how are you feeling? Saki's coming up to the altar now. Yeah. Good for you. And he's sitting right next to the onions here that are growing. Yeah, you're gonna check out the whole altar? That's a good way to do it. I'm sure. And you can see his mouth hanging open as he takes in the scent. Uncle Jacobson's organ. See that? He's really letting that scent reach the roof of the mouth. Yeah. Well, we came out here to have a little bit of tea because we had our poetry time and we had our tea. And then we thought we'd make a little offering. What do you think? Checked out the tea as well. There you go. Here's the Palo Santo. He's walking to the far edge of the altar now. Thank you, Saki. Saki is circumambulating the altar. Hey, buddy. Well, thanks for joining us. offering. food offering. I'll let you have a look at the Palo Santo. some tea here together and uh, listen to the all-natural sounds of the neighbor's leaf blower 
<laughs> and perhaps my own carpenter out back hammering or sawing or swearing or whatever happens. <laughs> but despite the conditions, we can sanctify our relationship to those conditions. So if you are feeling stressed, anxious, hey Saki, we're over here. You want to come over here? Come on. Come on. Come on. Here comes the guinea. Here he comes. Here he is. Hop aboard. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's what I need. As I was saying, if you're feeling stressed and anxious, get a massage from a professional. But if you are feeling stressed, anxious, nauseated, angry, depressed, confused. When it's appropriate to grieve, but it's also appropriate, I'd probably argue necessary to ensure that that grief is non-destructive. Thank you, Saki, that feels very good. That was an alarm that just said cleanse and smudge. <laughs> Rather apropos. But grieve. And then find something constructive, organize. Love, interact, listen, connect. Breathing, reconnecting, even if through ritual, to a state of actuality. Reconnecting to the truest you which is the you from which you will be relating to everything not you. If we, if we don't continue to touch in on our sense of ourselves, we've lost ourselves, which means we've lost relationship to other, which means we've lost the ability to understand other, to work with other. And so for some, a ritual, some morning tea and poetry, the ritual of a smudge, 
the act of offering shifts my heart back towards its capacity for seva, for compassion. This isn't to deny you know, the anger you may be feeling, the hate, the frustration, the delusion, the confusion. But it is to work, and this means Kung Fu, it is to work to ensure that nothing destructive follows and then to touch in on a <clears throat> whole self and from there find a path of constructivity one rooted in empathy compassion connection love seva satyagraha Plus, it could be that the winds of change are just the neighbor's leaf blower. <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. <clears throat> and so I'm consciously <clears throat> entering into a, <clears throat> a healthy space. Some tea, some poetry. <clears throat> 